Okay, hello everyone. Today we're here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 in Aerosoft's CRJ700. We have a 198 nautical mile flight from Bravo Delta Lima, Bradley International, to Sierra Yankee Romeo, Syracuse Hancock International. Bradley is by Latin VFR, and Syracuse is by Sierra Sim. Should be awesome. Let's hop into the pilot seat and get started. Bradley Airport is fantastic and is filled with all the detail that Latin VFR is known for. All right, we'll start by turning on Aerosoft's iPad, then we'll do our safety flows. So we'll make sure that our hydraulic pumps are off. We'll head down and verify that the landing gear is down. Our flaps are up, our spoilers are down, our parking brake is set, and our ADG is flush and flat. We'll head back up to the top here and get our battery master on. Now we'll go down and hit the electrical button twice and verify that we have at least 22 volts for main and APU. That's what we need to start the APU. Back to the overhead, we'll press the APU fuel button. Then we'll go down to the status page and verify APU door is open and APU invite self-test is complete. Now we can press APU start. The APU graphics pop up on the ECAM there. That's the two circular gauges in the lower left-hand side of the right-hand status display. And we just have to wait. When they get up to 99% for greater than two seconds, uh, all the other electrical systems will come online as the APU powers the plane. There is a fire test that we skipped. The first flight of the day does that. It's pretty late in the day, so that's already been done. I'll be moving pretty fast for this. If you want a slow and detailed cold and dark, uh, check out my previous video which takes you through each item step by step. All right, the APU is online and we've got power. So we'll head down here and get nav one and nav two on the IRS set. Back up to the overhead, we're going to turn on our nav and logo lights. We don't really need the logo lights, but I always like to turn them on. Then over to the hydraulic switches, we'll turn switch one, three, and four on. We'll bring up the hydraulic page and verify that we have pressure. Now we'll go and turn one, three, and four to the auto position and turn the second switch, which is really pump 3A, to on and verify that we're getting pressure from pump 3A. Now we'll put 3A back into the off position. Next, we'll get air conditioning pack one and two on. We'll turn on the recirc fan and the cargo air conditioning. We'll get the windshield left, right, anti-ice on. We'll turn on no smoking seat belts and arm the emergency lighting. Now we'll go down to the MCD, flip up the guard on the stall button, and test it. Then we'll verify that the cockpit voice recorder is working by pressing the green button and holding it for 5 seconds until the light illuminates. There it is. Next we'll disengage the parking brake, go to our center pedestal and flip the anti-skid button off, check for the display, it's there on the left, turn it back on, put the parking brake back on. We'll flip the two overheat tests overheat. Uh, in the center there by the landing gear and verify that we get displays for those as well. We'll flip the lights test to turn on all the lights, make sure they're illuminated. And then we will arm the left and right reverse thrusters, which are the two switches to the left of the throttle levers. Next is our TCAS test. So on the RTU, which is the radio display, uh, to the left of the throttle quadrant, uh, select TCAS test and we can see the indicators on the PFD as well as the audio warning. So that's working. Now down to the lower pedestal. We'll turn on the stabilizer trim left and right and the mock trim. And then we'll turn on yaw damper one and two. Go to the status page and verify that all those are cleared from the status. We'll head over to the iPad, bring up the aircraft page, and it's time to board our passengers. So let's open up the cargo and service doors, and then finally the passenger door, which will deploy the stairway. While we're here, we'll test our oxygen. There we go. And we'll flip on the camera, which lets us see who's at the cockpit door. That's working. We'll head back over to the ECAM and check the oxygen is in the green, which it is. We actually lost 10 PSI just doing that test. Now it's time to set up the MCU. So we will go to the index page, position init, and we'll put in our 
departing airport, uh, Kilo Bravo Delta Lima. We'll go to the next page, snag one of the GPS positions, and paste it into the set position field there. Now we'll hit the flight plan key and enter our departing and arrival airports. So again, Kilo Bravo Delta Lima for departure and Kilo Sierra Yankee Romeo for arrival. We'll also enter our flight number. Uh, so we're AA3556. Type that into the scratch pad and press the soft key next to flight number. That will also display it in blue on the PFD, which helps us with our ATC calls. Next step is to enter the actual flight plan, but before we do that, we have to get it cleared uh, because clearance delivery might change it. So I'll brief you on the plan first before we call up clearance. So this is a short IFR flight of 198 miles. Uh, we won't be using a SID or a STAR for this. Instead, we're going to fly direct using three Quebec Airways, uh, Quebec 480, 140, and 812. So we'll go direct Leswell Waypoint, then Kingston and Hancock VORs to Fabian Waypoint. There's an available SID, which is the Bradley 6 departure. If we were assigned that, we would use the Chester VOR and the Juliet 68 airway before going to Hancock. Uh, so either work, uh, we'll uh, go direct uh, with our initial request and see what we get. At Syracuse, we'll request the ILS for runway 28. It's pretty straightforward. We need to arrive at Stota at 2700 and intercept the glide slope at Zimby at 1600. Bradley Clearance, American Eagle 3556, IFR to Syracuse, ready to copy. Cleared to Syracuse Hancock, expect runway 33. On departure, fly runway heading, radar vectors Leswell, then as filed. Climb and maintain 4000, expect flight level 300, 10 minutes after departure. Departure 123.9 or 5, squawk 3414, American Eagle 3556. All right, we've got the flight plan that we requested, so let's enter that into the CDU. So go to the flight plan page, hit next, and put our initial waypoint, which is direct Leswell. So we'll type Leswell into the scratch pad and then hit the right hand uh, uppermost key, which will be the two, so that's direct two on the right. If it were an airway, we'd put it on the left. It turns magenta, that's our first waypoint. Next we are going on to an airway, which is Quebec 480, so we'll type that in and put it on the left hand side. Next is a VOR, which is Kingston, so we'll enter that in and put it on the right hand side. Technically we're following an airway, but direct VOR is the same route. Our VOR after Kingston is Hancock, so we'll go direct to that. And then finally we'll go to a waypoint, which is Fabin. On our PFD on the upper left there, you can see those are dotted lines because we haven't hit execute yet. So when we hit execute, they'll change from dotted to solid. There it is. Now we have to set our departure and arrival info by hitting the departure arrival key. We're going to select runway 33 for our departure from Bradley. Uh, we do not have a SID or a transition. Yeah, that's fine. I can have a place for you to stop. We just can't do it on the ramp um, because I can't. I don't have visibility back there, so I can't tell you if anything's clear. Next, we have to go to the departure arrival uh, index page and select arrival for Syracuse, okay. and then put in our arrival. So we're going to request the ILS for runway 28. Again, not flying a star, so simply the uh, the approach will be selected here. Our transition for the ILS will be radar vectors. We'll hit execute, then the legs key to bring up the flight plan, and we'll leaf through it, making sure it looks like what we expect. If we find any discontinuities, we'll copy the item that's underneath the discontinuity, and paste it over the discontinuity. We'll also look for any duplicated waypoints and uh, copy and paste them over each other. When it all looks good, we'll hit execute and our flight plan is set. 
Next we hit the MCDU menu, and this is just personal preference for me, but I like to turn off the airports because they clutter the display, and I like to turn on VNAV so I can see my waypoints and uh, VNAV requirements. Last item to set up here is the perf menu right, and perf the init. Uh, the room for you to get in in front of uh, once we get the here, then we're going to enter our flight level of flight level 300. And then our weights. So we can type all of these in manually, or we can just use the iPad uh, that's on our left here. Uh, go to the performance page. Give that a second. And then copy everything over to the MCD. I'll also copy the speeds over, the V1, V2, VR speeds while we're there. That looks good, so we will hit execute. Now when I was on that display, the takeoff trim was displayed of 7.2, so I will use my uh, flight controls to set the takeoff trim. We did have an altitude restriction of 4,000, so we will dial that in now on the MCD to have that all set up for takeoff. We'll also dial in our speed of 250 so that we remain at 250 or below while we're below 10,000 feet. On the right-hand ECAM, uh, status display, you'll see the landing elevation, so we'll look up Bradley's landing elevation, and then we'll need to go to the overhead and set that. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to hit the right Alt key on your keyboard and click on the display. That'll give you a pop-out. In this video, the pop-out's there, but you can't see it because it's an overlay. Uh, so you can have that there as you dial the landing elevation knob in the upper right. So we'll put in Bradley's airport elevation, and then we'll be set. Let's get our altimeter set up to the current ATIS. Head down to the lower pedestal. We'll toggle our comm frequency from clearance over to ground, and then we'll set our transponder to altitude mode. That's the little button that's on the lower left that has a 1 and a 2 on it, so we'll turn that to 1 to put it into altitude mode. Passengers and baggage are aboard, so let's get all of our doors closed up using the iPad. We'll hit the doors button and check the doors display on the ECAM just to make sure that they're actually all closed, and they are. On behalf of the captain and crew, welcome aboard this flight. We hope you enjoy flying with us. Before takeoff, we would like to encourage all passengers to we'll remove the wheel chocks. The the then we'll head back up to the overhead. We'll get the left and right fuel boost pumps on, and then we'll turn on the beacon because we are getting ready to move. There's a superb pushback mod that I'll link, uh, and you'll hear the voices from it. Cockpit to ground. This is ground. Stand by. Okay, sir. The bypass pin is installed. All doors and hatches closed, and all ground equipment is removed. Standing by for pushback. Release the parking brake. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead. We are cleared for start and push. Okay, cleared for push start. Parking brakes are released. Commencing pushback. You can start the engines in sequence. We'll tap on the chronometer to the, the left sequence. and start the timer because we're about to start the engines. Up to the overhead and press engine to start. What's awesome about this mod is it lets you steer with your joystick for pushback, so you can actually start the engines while still doing everything for pushback. As the engine's starting up, we're going to monitor N2. When N2 is at 20, then we'll head down to the thrust levers and uh, flip them into idle, or flip the right one into idle. There we go. Got a good start on engine 2. Parking brake set. In case of a Ground, cabin, you may so disconnect. Okay, sir. Clear to disconnect. To disconnect. Pin has been removed. Please See you at the side. Have a good flight. The Holding position, waiting for the visual. Thank you and goodbye. Located here and here. In case of an extreme emergency landing, you will be instructed to get into the brace position, which is executed by placing your head between your knees with your hands over your head. 
Engine 2 is above 20, so we'll get that into idle. And that safety briefing you hear is part of the Payware aircraft. So those flight attendant announcements uh, happen throughout the flight based on what you're doing, which is pretty cool. We'll get our flaps set for takeoff, uh, which is flaps 8 for this takeoff. We'll also hit the flight control button and bring up the flight controls screen and do our check. So forward, backward, left, right, rudder left, rudder right, that all looks good. On our left here, we'll bring up the integrated lighting, arm the nose wheel steering, uh, because we're gonna need that for taxi. If I press the bearing button, I can toggle overlays for FMS, VOR, ADF, whatever I'm using. So I'll bring up FMS1 as the magenta overlay on the PFD. I'll adjust the range on the PFD to have it uh, for the waypoints that I'll be using on takeoff. There we go, that looks good. I noticed I have a yellow yaw damper caution on my display, so one of the yaw damper buttons didn't click. So we'll head down, uh, click the left one, and I still have the flight controls display up, so we'll change that to the status display. So you can see all the cautions. And it looks like yaw damper 2 is also an operative, so we'll head down, press that. I clicked those before, not sure why they didn't register. But now everything looks good on the display. We've got the green things that we expect and the white things that we expect. All right, we'll toggle the ECAM over to the electrical page and verify that everything looks good for our power now that we've got the engines running. Looks good, so we could head up to the overhead, hit the stop for the APU and turn off the APU fuel. We'll put the ECAM back to the status page and we'll verify that the APU is off, so that all looks good. We'll turn on the taxi light, which is the recog light, and prep for taxi. Bradley Ground, American Eagle 3556, ready to taxi with Cold information, Juliet. Taxi and hold short, runway 33 via Sierra, American Eagle 3556. Release our parking brake, and we are good to go. We've got liveatc.net streaming in the background for Bradley's actual ATC. We're running with live weather and time. Uh, so, in theory, if you see a plane taking off, you might hear the actual ATC for it. Blue 6 Bradley Tau. We're with 330 at 4, turn right, heading 075, runway 6, cleared for takeoff. We'll set our parking brake and uh, toggle our frequency over to tower. Get our departure frequency all set up. Then we'll go up to the overhead, turn on our strobes, our landing lights, and put the fuel cross flow into manual for takeoff. We'll make sure that our flight director is turned on. It is not. There it is. And I like to use the progress page on the left CDU. That'll show me all of my flight plan waypoints, the distance to them, uh, and other information uh, that I'll need. On the right CDU, I'll put different displays up throughout the flight, depending on what additional information I need. Bradway Tower, Seven American files. Eagle 3556, five, holding short, eight, runway 33. Expect flight level 320. Cleared for departure, runway 33, American Eagle 3556. Looks clear left and right, clear straight ahead. Everything set up on the overhead. Release the parking brake. And we're off. Moxie 420, go ahead with read back. Moxie 
Your transport 4346 heavy, pushing your discretion, alpha turn, expect runway 6033, your choice. There's a little black button on the thrust levers, and you have to press that to put the uh, PFD into takeoff mode. See how it's blinking TO there? That'll adjust your pitch requirements for takeoff from the flight director, uh, which are the magenta lines there. Let me get back on center line, and we'll accelerate to uh, the middle detent, and then we'll go to toga. Getting some stutters here, it seems to be around Payware airports, so I think it's uh, just a bit much for my computer sometimes. Passing V1 and rotate. And the pitch is really sensitive on the CRG. I might have to set up uh, throttle quadrant profiles just for it. Land the gear up. We'll pitch for what the flight director's uh, setting us to. You can head over to the MCD and turn on the altitude and nav modes uh, for the autopilot. I engage that. And I've got a yellow caution light. Let's get the autopilot on and then we'll deal with that. Autopilot's engaged. We'll zoom in and we can see that the hydraulic pressure is low. Um, Alright, so let's head up to the overhead panel. And there it is. Uh, pump 2A was never turned on. I missed that in the checklist. That extinguished the caution light. All right, well, that wasn't good, but we're still alive. Normally for the trip montage, it's nothing but music, but I'm going to leave the ATC playing uh, quietly in the background so that you can hear it. Uh, it should add to the experience. So let's sit back and enjoy that awesome Flight Simulator series.
I still love this plane. It's maybe my 12th flight now in it, and it's taken that many before it's not been a complete disaster. So uh, each time I've flown it previously, I've messed something up, usually with overspeeding or the autopilot, but I'm starting to get a hang for it. My landings are also getting much better. Uh, like all aircraft, it's important to have the correct speed for landing. So if you land at the right speed, it's probably gonna sort itself out. And if you don't, you're gonna be all over the runway. So if you enjoy content like this, click that like button, leave me a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, as always, for flying along with me, and stay tuned for further flight adventures.